continuing my rebuild of the ZX81 game cabins, never released on the ZX81. In the last video I debugged a problem with the lift animation. This took rather a long time considering how small the bug turned out to be. So in this video I'll talk about some changes I made to the code to help speed up debugging and then talk about adding sprite functionality to the program. Thinking about why debugging was taking so long, I realised much of the time was spent paging up and down the debugger listing, trying to find bits of code that might be causing the problem. I would look for an instruction in the source code, for example load A54, that would stand out from the rest of the code, then orientate myself in the debugger code from that, inserting breakpoints at locations I thought would help with diagnosis. But as I added more and more code, this was taking longer and longer. So a bug that should take 10 minutes to fix was taking an hour. If there's a find function in the C-Spec debugger, I haven't found it yet. The first change I made was to move the binaries out of the way to the end of the code. Then I added markers to the code to identify the start of routines. I used the format 000n, where n indicates the routine number. The three zeros on NOP instructions stand out in the debugger's listing, and I can see them easily. I put the routine I was working on at the top of the listing, so it was easy to page to from the start of the code at hex 8000. I mark this as 00255. I ordered the other routines 0001, 0002, and so on, putting the game loop at the top of the code, as this is called most often. I can put breakpoints into this to start off debugging. Once the routine is finished, I would move it down the listing, so I can put the next in progress code at the top as 000255. This made paging through the code on the debugger much clearer and speedier up development. When developing the original Z80 for cabins in the 80s, I had coded routines for each of the moving parts of the screen. So the spaceship, tank, tank missile, Bridges and Baroque Teeth all had their own routines. But having built a simple sprite engine in TypeScript, one of my games later on, I thought this approach might cut down on the code I would need to write this time round. I started out by defining the data each sprite would need, including fields to cover the different types of sprite. This included the width and height of the sprite, the character to write behind the sprite as it moved, generally a space to clear that part of the screen, the current X and Y position of the sprite, and the direction it's moving in, or if it's stationary. I feel to say where on the screen the sprite should stop moving. For example, the spaceship flies in from the left and stops moving above the cabin entrance. Also values for initialising the sprite with when the game starts, and then the actual Z81 characters for the sprite. No sprite is more than two rows high, and all sprites only move horizontally. Rather than dealing with negative numbers for when the sprite is off the side of the screen, I use an offset of 10 characters for the X position. No sprite is wider than 10 characters, so I can hold sprites off the screen to the left of it without using negative numbers, which I'm not ready for yet in assembly. When the game starts, it calls an initialized sprites routine which sets up all the sprites. In the game loop, I added a move sprites routine which updates all moving sprites with their new position and redraws them. With the sprite data for the spaceship defined, I started building the code to handle the sprite. Things started getting complicated, and I realised that there was so much data in use that I was running out of registers, and pushing and popping weren't sufficient to deal with this, and the code was getting too complex to understand. In object-oriented programming, the sprite would have local copies of data in the object. I couldn't do this, but to parallel it in assembler, I added a working data structure for all the data in use on the sprite that was being updated. When starting updating the sprite, I used the LDIR instruction to copy the sprite's data into this temporary area, use this area in the code, then copied any updates to it back to the sprite's data at the end. I was now able to build the code to handle a sprite, first working out some pseudo code to describe what I needed to do. With about a day's work, I got the spaceship flying onto the screen from the left. A couple of problems, it didn't stop where it should, and it was leaving a trail behind it. 
a fix to make it stop where it should, then another one to clear the trail behind it. Now the test was could I add the tank and the sprite engine would just work. I defined the sprite and hooked it into the game loop. A couple of minor bugs because the tank was moving to the left instead of right like the spaceship, but within 10 minutes I had it working. So that was enough for one weekend and in the next video I will go on to add more of the sprites. Maybe the tank missile or the bridges, but that's for another day.